Hello and welcome to episode 27 of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia Horror Edition. Ooh. Uh, this is Brandon. This is Brad. This is Patrick. Patrick LeQuay, sitting in for the first time. So I guess we could say you're getting your podcast cherry pop tonight. Oh yeah, it feels good. And we uh, have our first special guest, or a spe- we have an audience, an audience yeah. member. Spectator. Uncle Ron. Woo woo! Uh, from famous podcast from before all the stories, uh, he's uh sitting up sitting on the bed of the hotel room. Uh, I bet he's really excited to be here. <laughs> yes. And for tomorrow, <laughs> yeah, tomorrow, uh, Universal Studios, which we'll go over. So uh, this is your episode, Brad. So I'm going to pass the reins over to you. All right. So we've got a, quite a few things for you today. We've got a top five list, maybe two top five list horror themed. Brandon and I and Patrick are real big horror fans. We're going to be talking about our top five list. We're going to be talking about a movie that we're making. Nick, not so big of a horror fan, so he's sitting this one out. Plus, we're down in L.A., so uh, he'll be here in spirit. So how are you doing today, Patrick? Not too bad, other than my stomach was bothering me earlier, but I'm doing all right. What's it? What's up with a bunch of guys going in a hotel room, and then they all have to take shits when they get there? <laughs> I guess for the long drive. Shits and giggles, man. Shits and giggles. <laughs> Taco Bell. <laughs> Taco Bell, yeah. Taco, Taco Bell, Bell contributed yeah. to it. <laughs> I didn't I didn't actually go to the bathroom yet. Well, I guess I mine came up the other way. Like that South Park episode. Yeah. Well I didn't I didn't really eat up my butt, but kinda. <laughs> no, we don't know. You yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I believe what our treasure hunting is budget this time. I think Brandon and I have one item to reveal. So there's not gonna be a winner or a loser today. That's what I'm talking about. So I guess I'll go first. This is I found this at the thrift store for a dollar ninety nine. Oh man, Resident Evil Two, the Dual Shock Edition. Oh, that's tight. Too bad the case is jacked up. What is, change it out. What the heck? You can't change these out. Yeah, I don't know how to change them out. I can change them out. All right. I don't believe that Claire should be the front disc. She goes in the back. She takes it in the back. <laughs> you know she does. <laughs> That's the only way she does it. Yeah. <laughs> Leon. Claire, it's fair. In the back. <laughs> cool. How much is this worth? Twenty. Cool. Mine's worth half that. Really? Twenty bucks. Mm-hmm. I I got it for a dollar ninety nine as well from Dimple. Mine was two ninety nine. <laughs> Final fight. <laughs> <laughs> That's tight. It's worth ten dollars. Yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. Final fight with Hagar and Cody. Came up on previous podcasts. Mm-hmm. Final Fight 2 and 3 is worth more, though. Oh, yeah. Buku De Niro. Buku Bucks. Okay, so our Game of the Week is going to be on hold for this week. We're not going to go into that. So let's get started with this horror show. Uh, this real nice horror show. Let's go with our top five horror villains of all time. Uh, Brandon, do you want to go first? Sure. Number five is going to be uh, probably the smallest person on anyone's list. Uh, one of the very first horror movies I saw, I guess you can call it horror, uh, The Troll from Cat's Eye. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that little fucker scared the shit out of me. Yeah. I was one with Drew Barrymore, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Matt, our little brother, had uh, he was very notorious. Once he saw that he could make us crack up by doing this, he uh, didn't stop. Uh, there's the troll in the movie. He raises his little sword up after the first fight of the cat and uh, lets out a screech. And Matt would do that with his fake play swords when we were little, and they would just crack us up all the time. And he poked himself in the eye one time with his <laughs> little plastic knife. Oh, yeah, it was heck a little, too. Yeah. So that's my number five troll. Right. Patrick? Number five, I'd say probably uh probably Jason. Mm-hmm. Uh Jason Voorhees. Um I'm not really sure why I picked him. I think it's just because he uh he looked cool with the mask and then when they did the remake, um, with the whole nap set or the, the burlap set, mm-hmm. um, it kinda of put a whole new little spin on him. Um I mean, yeah, all the movies are kind of the same more or less, but uh um, I really liked the the remake. I think the remake kind of pushed him in my top five. Yeah. The whole 
origin story that they expanded on. Yeah, and I liked how they condensed pretty much all of part one into like the first 15 minutes with the mom. That was cool. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so my number five is going to have to be Beetlejuice. (laughs) Not that much of a villain, but he's a villain in his own way. Uh, Tries to come back to the living, uh, tries to kill Barbara and Alec Baldwin. I forgot his name. But um, real, real funny guy. When he turns into the snake, that scared me when I was little. And he has a bunch of cool taglines and the ghost with the most. And he even had a cartoon spinoff. Great guy. And he got away for uh, cussing, saying the F word on a PG-13 movie. I was just going to say the F word, but I wasn't sure if I could on here. Yeah. Yeah. Nice uh, fucking legs. Nice fucking, yeah. (laughs) And I think he called him a fucking retard, too, or something. Yeah, when they uh, banished him, and he grabbed his nuts. Yeah. (laughs) Fucking retards. Something. How could you just become Batman? (laughs) And they're doing a sequel, right? Michael Keaton is pushing it. Yeah. Oh, are they now? Yeah. Uh, it's not no longer Beetlejuice goes Hawaiian. Yeah, was, although that would be kind of number four. Very official list here. I got a. I was thinking about my favorite like monster type creature, and I thought of I really like werewolves, so I picked Lucian from Underworld series. He's uh, probably my favorite vampire. He was badass. The, or werewolf rise of the lichens he was uh that character was well developed in that story he's yeah um i i don't like werewolves that look like big dogs like in the twilight gay series and uh, what else was there big dogs uh, oh uh true blood they're big dogs i'm like whatever uh dog soldiers one thing is like well, no, they were werewolves. Named dogs. Mm-hmm. No, I, I've oh, always yeah. wanted to. Uh, it's for an English movie, right? Yeah, I mean, I mean it's in... Yeah. It's not, like, you could never tell. Like, yeah. And because uh, I always see it in the foreign section of Netflix. And um, so I picked, yeah, Lucian, uh, Great Wolf. I like when they're bipedal on two legs and they're big and ferocious. Uh, I was going to put the American Werewolf in Paris, Lund, or London, one of those two. Uh, I love the transformation scene in London, um, but uh, he still, he's running around on all fours and you barely get to see him. That Thinking about that movie, it's crazy. It's like the whole Nazi scene with those Nazi monsters yeah, in the dream. Yeah. That's nuts. I, I just, that just popped in my head. Yeah, the Nazi werewolves is crazy. Yep, so over to Pat. All right, I went ahead and went with uh, Michael Myers. Mm. I didn't really want to go with him as being number four, but since we're doing it like kind of like in the sequence, um, it, it was a lot like uh, my choice was a lot like the Jason choice. The remake kind of had a lot to, um, you know. Again, he's relentless, doesn't stop. He's kind of got that supernatural vibe. Um, other than that, he stalks babysitters. And that's kinda cool. <laughs> yeah, it, it's like you said. It's hard to put these in sequence. Uh, one through five, um, it's just hard. Okay. Yeah, and, and have you noticed that the Jamie from Curse of Michael Myers, the little girl, mm-hmm. grew up to be in the the remake? Yeah, and you showed her titties. Yeah. What? Yeah. yeah. Titties in it? Yeah. <laughs> Is that the remake <laughs> with Rob Zombie? Right? Yeah. I think they had titties in Argo. In Argo, too. yeah. That's another horror movie. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you ask that question? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were at uh. Yeah, the first time I met Pat was we were all went to go see the collection, uh, and we were waiting in line. And this dude was like, "I guess he's been, he went to the movies like three times that day or something. Like he had free, a, he had like a free pass for that day, and uh, he was like, he's a black guy. Yeah, well, <laughs> uh, he was, that matters. <laughs> he said, "There's only one teller open. We're waiting in line." He goes. What about, what is it, Argo? Does that have a lot of action? action. In, no, yeah, in action. Lincoln. Oh, yeah, Lincoln. Lincoln, does that have a lot of action in that movie? And the person's like, I don't know. And then I don't remember what he went to go see eventually. What did they ever pick? Yeah, so then I get up in line and I'm like... Brad's like, I'm going to be hecka funny. <laughs> yeah, so I, I walk up to the guy and the guy's been through hell, through the previous guy, and like, hmm, Argo, does that have any titties in it? And he's like... No. Uh, all right. Asian guy. Yeah, little Asian guy with glasses. And he's like, no. I was like, all right. Well, 
I guess give me uh, one for the collection. So he gave me, yeah. Yeah. So, so that was funny. Good stuff. Good. My number four? Mm-hmm. My number four is going to be Jason. Uh, I have him down on my list because I remember uh, he used to scare the shit out of me. The, the one scene in particular at the end of Jason Lives, after he got his uh, head rowboated and Tommy sunk him with the rock. Uh, I remember the end credits, his eye opened, and that scared the shit out of me. Yeah. And then whenever he didn't have his mask on when in, uh, Man- Jason Takes Manhattan, that scared the shit out of me. Was that the first time we saw him without the mask? Well, no, you saw him before. yeah, like in part four or six, even when Tommy's digging him up, uh-huh. uh, you see all, like all the maggots on his face, uh-huh. and we were like, we never looked at, we're like, ugh, gross. But um, yeah. you see him a few times without his mask. Yeah, it's freaky. I still think one of the best like kill scenes though in those movies was the the remake when he grabs a suit mag and slams it against the, the tree. He does. Awesome. He does that in uh, part seven, right? And X. He does it in Jason oh, X. It. When oh, they do yeah, the decoy, in, yeah. don't they have like, the decoy of the decoy two girls that are naked or something? Yeah, yeah. you're right. Yeah. 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 He lit it on fire or something, didn't he? Like, I think so. <laughs> over yeah, the fire. Awesome. Yeah, over the fire, right? Yeah, he was cooking them around. <laughs> that was hell of fun. Tastes like chicken. My number three. Is David from the Lost Boys, oh. played by the great Kiefer Sutherland? Uh, I think one of the best vampires in my uh, in my opinion. Just crazy, and uh, the thing I like about Lost Boys is it kept a lot of the laws of the vampire in the movie, uh, with the whole garlic and having to invite them in, and if you invite them in, they lose their power. Uh, so that was, yeah. Um, and the, they had a lot of cool, like the last 20 minutes of that movie is just amazing with all the, the fighting going on, the, yeah. all the vampire deaths, it's cool. And that song, dude, that, that was an awesome song. Cry right? Little Sister? Yeah. Cry Little Sister! Whatever it was. Yeah, I, I um, bought the soundtrack just so I could have that yeah. song on my iPod. Yeah, it's tight. Cool. Have you seen part three? Uh, I've seen, I have the first, I've seen the second one. The, the third one has the, one of the best death scenes of vampires of all time. Well, yeah, <clears throat> that's that was the tribe. Or no, it's no, the one after that. Tribe, right? The other yeah, one was the, yeah. That's a shame Corey Hem died. Yeah, I have to watch that movie. I haven't watched it. I only watched it once, part three. Yeah, I watch it again. Yeah, he said David. Oh, that was just my turn. Yeah. Uh man, it's a tough call for the next three, <clears> but um, I'm gonna have to say John Doe from. Uh, from uh, Seven. Mm. He's got to be one of the best serial killers on screen. Bar none. Um, I mean, real type of person, like as far as a serial killer. I mean, Kevin's... I'm sure everybody's seen it by now. Yeah. But Kevin Spacey was just amazing in that role. And to keep him like under wraps for that long and not letting anybody know that he was going to be the, the killer. Yeah. And that was such a good role for him. <clears throat> and they show, they showed him in the early part of the movie, and yeah. no one knew what was him. Nobody had when he was taking it. the pictures. Yeah. yeah, in fact, they showed him a couple times too. Yeah. A, uh, no, no, they showed him one time because he hit. I think that's when Brad Pitt broke his arm when he was the whole chase scene. Yeah, actually really broke it in the movie. Hmm. But uh, I mean, just the way that they did the killings and just I mean, he was such a, such a horrible person. Yeah, and he 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 did he was in another twist movie, that Usual Suspect movie. Yeah, yeah. The only a lot of people like it. The only reason I don't like it is because I knew that he was Kaiser Sosa from the oh, get go. Really? I figured I was like, oh man, he's gonna walk out of there without a limp or anything because he pretended to be crippled. Yeah. But then I was like, oh, well, at least I was right. That's pretty cool, I guess. Yeah. What on number two or number three? Three. That would be number three. Oh yeah, yeah. Number three for me is gonna be Pennywise from It. Mm. Uh, I read the book and I watched the movie. I heard the remaking the movie, and the the book terrified me. The movie terrified me even more, only because you could see Tim Curry and he had the sharp fangs and everything. And the premise of it is he could become any one of your fears. So he'd be a giant pickle for you. (laughs) (laughs) I'm (laughs) Jill Man. No, he'd probably be like a giant snake or something. But would pickle a seat? Snake pickle? Yeah. No, uh, but. You know, if you're afraid of spiders, it's gonna be a spider. If you go, it's it, it just like plays on you and your on your mind. If you read the book, it goes in more about it. 
But I put him as my number three. <clears throat> Tim Curry did an awesome job playing him. Yeah. He was great as, as Pennywise, but I didn't care for the movie. Yeah. I didn't like the rest of the movie. Was, that was too long. What well, was a mini series or something? Was it? Yeah. TV three TV episodes. Or yeah, three, it was on three nights. Yeah. yeah. I, I did like him as a clown, though. You're right. It's good with that lot of me, too. And I hate clowns. So. <laughs> clowns and dolls. <laughs> uh, number two on my list was Jason Voorhees. Uh, pretty stock answer, but what is there to say about him that hasn't been said before? I was going to bring up the sleeping bag scene, but I knew that was going to make it in um, with your guys' conversation, so, yeah. I had to bring it up because of the campers. So. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, but, yeah. Still freaks me out when they sleeping bag like that. <laughs> Do you sleep out in a, t in a uh, sleeping bag when you camp? Uh, no, 10. ten. But, uh, I've slept in the trunk, in the back of the truck, mm. which is really uncomfortable. I slept on a crate. In the back of my truck, <laughs> like angled. Oh man! Uh, the last time I went camping, that was not a real comfortable, smart idea. I've had sex in the back of a pickup truck at night. Oh really? With no camper on it, uh -huh. under the stars, it was amazing. It's pretty cool. I, I had sex in a, in a tent in like a hundred degree weather. Oh it man! Sucks. <laughs> I guess you wouldn't need any lube. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, so I guess it's up to me then, huh? Yeah. All right, these last two were really tough. They were like neck and neck, but uh, I'm going to have to say Jigsaw is probably uh, going to be number two. Um, well, the first time I ever saw that Saw movie, that blew me away. That that twist ending still, to this day, is like one of the best twist endings. Ever. It is. You can't really compare to it. I mean, no, I mean it, really it, can't. I mean, no one knew that dude was going to get up at the end. Yeah, and who's going to who's going to expect that it's an old guy like the whole time killing? Him? He's progressively getting worse and worse with his health. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I know he doesn't live throughout the whole entire series, but he's there in spirit, basically. Yeah. And just the way he just conceives, like, all the traps and, like, luring the people in. I mean, and it's still, to this day, I think still a lot of people kind of, kind of wonder if he was the one that was designing all the traps or if he had help, because there's just no way a frail old man could do all that. Yeah. So he had to have been healthy or he had to have some help. Man, if you could take out Danny Glover and Donnie Wahlberg, with and the Asian Cup, yeah, and being uh, having cancer, yeah, there's something amazing with you. You, or you think he would have been able to take out Riggs, Mel Gibson? <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough one. <laughs> They're both kind of crazy. <laughs> crazy. One's crazy. One's smart. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, you know, speaking of Jigsaw, I mean, he he went after. Basically, criminals or people that had the criminal element. So, in today's society, that's we don't use. In my opinion, we don't use the death penalty enough to take out sick and twisted individuals. Yeah, he had a nice kind of spin to it. Yeah, let him fight for their life. Yeah, to redeem himself. My number two is going to have to be Chucky from uh, Child's Play series. <laughs> Brad Dorf does an amazing job doing his voice. When when he's even to this day when he's like fuck you pal and it's a little doll saying that, just so hilarious. And uh, the first time I think what scared me the most on the first one when I was little watching it is when the mom's like, "You talk to me, damn it, or I'm gonna throw you in this fire." And he turns around, he's like, "Fuck you, bitch!" And he starts hitting her and yeah. biting her, and he just goes off. He's like, "Oh shit, there's Chucky." Now the mom knows about it, so no one's safe. <laughs> It's the laugh, man. That laugh is. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really would have liked to. I I read like the. This is probably public knowledge, but the um, trivia was they wanted to make it seem like Andy was the killer more mm -hmm. in the beginning uh, instead of us knowing it's this doll. Um, but they decided to go us another route, probably because it was kind of taboo to have a kid as a killer. But that would have been cool to see that. I don't know. I think that would have taken away from Chucky all his great moments and stuff. Yeah. But I mean, they kind of do that in the first part of the movie because you didn't really see him move or talk or anything until that moment anyway. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. They probably could have gotten away with it nowadays with it being a kid, of course. Yeah. There, there's just so much stuff that they've done with kids now. I mean, they've, like, what was it? What, I can't remember what movie it was. It was. Oh, I was. Uh, it was a French movie. It was called High Tension. 
Oh, Rocky with Anne Hayes Hayes or whatever? No, it was a girl that looked kind of like Yeah, her. Okay. yeah. But uh, if they remade it, that would be a perfect person. Uh -huh. But um, but yeah, there was a kid in that, and, and uh, he gets shot by a shotgun in like a field. Wow. Well, you don't really, I don't think you see it. Well, I have the uncut version, so you might in the uncut version. That was yeah, a good movie. Good yeah, it was. Uh, number one on my list, Freddy Krueger, hands down. Uh, That's my number one as well. Yeah. Uh, oh, Pat has a good one. Uh, Are you looking? <laughs> Brad's all trying to. Uh, yeah, uh, Freddy Krueger, funny, sadistic, uh, kill you in your dreams. Witty. Yeah, very witty and no place to hide. Uh, if you try to stay up long enough, they say um, your body shuts down and you're in an imminent coma, and he could play with you all night long. <clears throat> yeah, that that was more that was more on the the new one or yeah. the remake. Yeah, but that that was cool. The um the original seven, of course, are far better than the remake. Robert England did such a great job yeah. as Freddy. There's no hands down no other. I like the she would eat coffee to stay on them. Yeah, she would <laughs> eat the coffee. That was part three. The grounds or something. Or the, yeah. The grounds? Yeah. yeah. Where's the bourbon, bitch? Yeah. <laughs> Just so many great lines in all the movies. A little tongue tied. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like some are kind of ridiculous, like part five, the dream child. That was kind of out there. But still, part seven uh, is really good. That's my, my top, one of my top three. Um, when he was, uh, new, when nightmare. That new nightmare, yeah. yeah, I love the glove in that. Yeah, yeah. yeah a friend of mine makes the Freddy gloves, like mm -hmm. homemade gloves. That's right. And uh, I kept asking him if he was going to make that one. He said no because he didn't want to give him the latex and all that. Mm -hmm. But that's the one of my favorite gloves. Yeah, he looks so dark and evil in that one mm -hmm. too. And you notice when at the end when Heather is fight or Heather, I guess it's Heather in that mm -hmm. one. I was going to say Nancy. When she hits her head on one of the things, it says lust. So it like kind of <laughs> ties together Freddy and her relationship mm -hmm. together. So that was cool. Yeah. So let's hear Patrick's number one. All right. Well, like you guys, I was going to go with Freddy because ever since I was a little kid, I mean, it's just something about. And actually, it was funny, too, because like the first time I ever saw a uh, Nightmare on Elm Street movie was on TV. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, of course, it's going to get cut out. And it was. I believe it was the Dream Warriors, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I don't know what it was about that, but he stayed in my head. And, and like, I remember having a nightmare uh, one, night, one night, and uh, I was in, like, a boiler room or some factory or whatever. It was a long, long time ago when I was younger. But um, <laughs> I was, like, walking around, and I remember looking up, I think, or maybe I was looking down. I, I might have been on the catwalks. And then... Uh, I saw Freddy and I saw myself and like he's he comes up and I think it was from behind he stuck me in the back with his claws wow. and it went through my stomach and they always say it like I've always heard that like if you see yourself die in a dream you really die in real life and so like obviously I'm living for <laughs> because I saw myself die I didn't wake up until I literally like hit the ground and was dead but uh, that's just stu it stuck with me for so long and then like you know, with the new nightmare, I mean, it was just like, I was more added on to the fact that, like, he was such a good villain, but then that remake just <laughs> fucked it over, <laughs> and then I just kind of dropped him down off my list, and, uh, so I had to go with, uh, a more recent villain, who's just, I've never seen a, a villain in, like, a horror movie that's been, like, this sadistic, and I went with the collector. Yeah. I mean, that guy is... He put Jigsaw to shame, and I thought Jigsaw was a damn good villain, but that guy is so... And to be able to see it in the collection was just, like, his whole world, it just blew me away. Mm -hmm. All those um, bodies that were just strung up on the walls like art, and, uh, I mean, it was, like, probably one of the most sadistic movies I've ever seen in my life. And he had, movies, actually. he had that army underneath yeah, the, the hotel. Army yeah, the that were all muted. Um, yeah. Yeah, it was just he had to he had to get on my list on there somewhere, and I wish I knew like if he had a real name, so I would have seen yeah, what yeah. his name was. But you know, I hope I really do hope they make a third one. That's what they're going to call. It. Yeah, well, they're supposed to call it what, the collected. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I wonder how they're going to do that. Yeah, hope. I uh, they said something about because the first one was about the collector mm -hmm. to set him up, and then the second one was about his mm -hmm. his whole kind of like 
origin, I guess, like expanded to origin, and then the third one, the collected, is supposed to be about his victims, the ones that he's collected, because you don't really see who he's collected. Yeah. You just except, get a notion that he's collected people. Yeah, except for that one girl who is yeah. crazy. Yeah. That, yeah, that was like a little foreshadowing. Mm -hmm. So, anyone want to bring up any honorable mentions? Uh, I think I had a few honorable mentions. I had uh, the Creeper from Jeepers Creepers. Yeah, he was pretty good. Uh, he was pretty good, and also Hannibal Lecter. Yeah, see, I didn't even think about Hannibal Very uh, debonair, very charismatic, but he'll eat you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I had Alex DeLarge from Clockwork Orange. Mm. I didn't care for the movie. Yeah. Maybe it was because it was about rape. Maybe. I'm not a big... Not a that, that movie is twisted. Yeah, it was weird. I saw that movie actually in Halloween, and uh, when I used to work for um, Hollywood Video, yeah. I saw it actually one night when I was closing with a coworker of mine. She turned it on. That's how I saw it. No, <laughs> she was hitting on you. She's like, she must have. Look at this she, thing. She also put on Boogie Nights and <laughs> and Oz. Oh man, and Oz, the one with Michael Jackson. The Wiz, the Wiz. Yeah. Dang, uh, she wanted you to piss on her. On she wanted you to rape her and hit her with a giant penis. It's, yeah. Oh, I could do one of those things. <laughs> Uh, my honorable mentions were Cloverfield, the Cloverfield monster, <laughs> um, and Red Eye. Uh, uh, what's his name? Killian, Cillian Murphy. Killian, yeah, uh, he, Jackson Ripner. I guess Jack the Ripper. I, they're playing yeah. on, but uh, it would have been better if that bitch died at the exactly, end. Exactly. That's why I didn't put him up there because he ended up losing at the end to that chick. I'm like, there's no way some guy like that could lose. It was like um, that movie P two. Yeah. Oh yeah, um, she, he she overpowered him too. Wow, that yeah. sucks. <laughs> that was a good movie too. Uh, let's see, do I have any honorable mentions, or is that do you have any other ones? No, that, those are only two. Um, besides Freddy, um, I don't know. Leatherface was one that I kind of played around with for a little while. Um. Since our talk in this in the car about tremors, mm -hmm. the worms <laughs> <The> gravel <laughs> popped in my head again today, just a little while ago, because uh, just the funny whole the whole funny thing. Um, there was another one, but I'm drawing a blank on who it was. But I don't think it was like a person specifically. It was like rather a group. Mm -hmm. but, uh, uh, I don't know. There's just so many damn good like horror movies. Oh well, uh, uh, Sinister. Yeah. Bagul. Bagul, yeah. That was really good. He was, I mean, he was creepy looking when you actually saw what mm -hmm. he looked like in the flesh. I mean, and then how they put him in the actual pictures or the film after the fact. Like, was he, you guys think he was in the movies, in the, the home movies the whole time and we just didn't see him? Or do you think they inserted him in? I think they inserted him in. Because yeah. mm -hmm. I was wondering if I just overlooked it. But, yeah, there's, there's just too many, there's well, far too many villains out there that are good. I mean, there really isn't a favorite of mine. Yeah. They're all family. Yeah. You gotta have the evil to balance out the good. Yeah. So, that goes with the top five horror villains. Uh, let's try another top five list. Top five horror movies. Oh, man. This, this... When you threw that on me, I was like, I, I don't know. Because <laughs> you know it's always changing for me. Me too. Like, you'll watch something old and be like, that's on my top three now. But then you're like, it falls off. But I think I've got like a top 25. Yeah. Or something. I just ridiculously high anymore. Like, I can't do the whole favorite thing anymore. Like, I can't yeah. do it with music. I can't do it with... Uh, so... Uh, oh, why didn't I say the Joker? The <laughs> Joker. Yeah, I like horror. Or yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, especially Dark Knight. Yeah, or even nowadays with the new 52 stuff. Oh, is he? No friggin' face. Oh, I saw that. And he bandaged all up. I and, by the t-shirt one. And he's got, um, doesn't he have like a face he attaches? Yeah, he puts a face on it. Like, they went with the whole uh, leather face style. Oh, that's I cool. Think, I think, I don't know, I, I haven't actually read them yet. I have them all, but I haven't read them. But I think they've now given him like their Joker look. Hmm. So, he wasn't. so he's, uh, he's in the new Batman 52. You have the whole run so far? Yeah. How many are there? Twenty. Well, it depends on what series. Mm. But it's, I think it's up to like twenty-five or twenty-six. Right oh, now. Okay. Number five on my list is Dracula, the original. 
you watch that? The yeah. Hammer film? Yeah. No, the original from 1930. Oh, way back. Yeah. Christopher Lee? No, no, Bella Lugosi. Bella Lugosi. Yeah. Well, that's still Hammer, though. I think. Yeah, I think so. I think it does. They, they had control over Dracula for quite a long time. Uh, I saw it because it's on public domain on YouTube, so I decided to watch it, and uh, it's good uh, as of the Dracula accent. But the character that really puts it over top is uh, his slave Renfield. Mm -hmm. That guy is crazy in that movie. Really? He, yeah, he's really good. Like he starts out as a normal guy, but then he gets taken by Dracula, and he just turns warped and crazy. That's Still. cool. Mm -hmm. Have you guys seen the new Dracula TV show? I haven't seen I forgot it's it was coming good. on. It's pretty good. Um, the Renfield in the, uh, in the show is actually a black guy. Mm -hmm. He's like a big black guy. And like, I didn't know it was Renfield, because like, I hear Dracula say, well, his name's not Dracula in the show, but I hear him say Renfield, and I'm all, who the hell is he talking to? Mm -hmm. So I went on uh, YouTube, and I was like, oh, okay, it's the big guy. Oh, know? okay. Huh. But it's a it's a pretty good show. And it's about Dracula in modern times. You know what I thought it was, and it's not. There's still stage. There's like the stage coaches and there's huh. dances and stuff. That's so cool. I don't think it is modern day. Okay. It, unless just where they're at, maybe is hmm. it, modern. Because I didn't see like TVs or. But they do have electricity. Like they show like he presents electricity to everybody. Hmm. And he's been he's like somebody calls him a fraud, and they're like, No, you're a fake, and you're a fraud. And I don't know how you did it, but. And I'm like, really? He lit up all these, like, friggin' things. There's no way he's a fraud. Even if he is a fraud, that's still amazing. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so. But it's a good show, though, it's worth checking out. Do you have Hulu Plus? No. Oh, okay. I just have Netflix. Uh, uh, I was... I, I wanted to stop my subscription to Hulu Plus, so I took all my money out of the account that... Um, it comes from so when they tried to charge it it wouldn't charge so they stopped for like six months and then I checked my bank statement today or the other day and they charged it I was like oh man <laughs> they, they redo it so I guess I could go on Hulu Plus again maybe Dracula will be on there I could check yeah. it out yeah. yeah it's a good show it'd probably be on um, well I don't know because last night it was the second episode so mm -hmm. it's every Friday night after uh, Brim oh okay alright I'm gonna watch it yeah that's yeah, a good block right there uh, I guess it's up to me, huh? Yeah. Oh, first, gotta do, uh, just do just do first on your list. That's what I'm gonna just go on my list. So it's not like any nah. actual. Yeah. Do you want to do top five or just just? We five? just talk about them. All right. All right. Well, obviously the collection. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> not set on that one. Yeah. I'm pretty much say what I was gonna say earlier. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna have to say Story of Echoes. Oh yeah, that was a really good movie. That was good. Yeah, with Kevin Bacon. Kevin Bacon sold it. Anything Kevin Bacon is, and I'm there. Well, Bacon's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Bacon with chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin Bacon and Danny Glover in the yeah. same movie. <laughs> um, no, Star of Echoes is a really creepy movie. When you first put on the DVD... Oh, I hate that. It, like, it messes with you. It, it goes to the menu screen, and then you push menu, and nothing's working. You're like, what the heck? And then, like, it, the screen shakes, and a ghost comes up on the screen. It scares the shit out of you. Yeah. Yeah, and, and um, uh, he it, it kind of a, he plays a psychic in that movie, kind of his son does too. But um, they go and try to find a ghost of a girl who was killed, and she scares them and tries to lure them to her. So that I I put that on my number five. That's cool. It's really weird too, because like I used to always think that movie was a poor man's uh, sixth sense. Because hmm. like I never finished watching the movie for like the longest time I'd always fall asleep because I would watch it like at the most random times I guess so I'd always be like and then I just don't know six cents and then I'd be like <laughs> and then one night I just like I, I don't know if it was during the night or the day or whatever but I ended up just watching it and then I was like oh this game yeah it's definitely not the same type of movie I mean it's a ghost movie but yeah so I went in and bought it so yeah it's good good, good choice uh, four on my list is Jack Burke's Monster Slayer. Yeah. Uh, great movie. Uh, starts off with him as a child. They're out camping with, he's out camping with his daughter or his sister and his parents. And just out of nowhere, this monster comes and kills the daughter and the parents. And, uh, he's the only one left alive and he grows up with this frustration and anger. And in order to release his anger, he becomes a monster slayer. Uh, Freddie or uh, Robert England's in it as uh, like his guide and mentor. Yeah. Uh, so it's pretty good. Cool. 
Saul. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, you're gonna sense a theme for a little while here. It's <laughs> like stuff like this, but uh, yeah, I mean, Saul, so kind of like what I said about Jake Saul. I mean, it was in the whole twisting, and it was just different for like. I mean, we, sure, we've all seen serial killer movies, and we've all seen cop dramas and old thrillers, or whatever. And we've seen horror movies, but I mean, for a couple of new newcomers, I mean, to their debut film, I mean, it was just so like. I don't know, it just really stuck with me in that for a long time. And then, like, they made all the other movies after that, but it was just, like, that one particular first movie. I mean, just two guys, who would have thought, two guys trapped in a bathroom the friggin' whole time. Yeah. It was going to be, like, an interesting movie. And one of them was a Dread Pirate Roberts. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to go with, my next one is going to be Dawn of the Dead, the original, because that's... Um, what really got me introduced into the zombie movies. Zombie movies are really cool. Um, the new one's cool too. It was a cool remake, but just the old one, just they're stuck in the mall. Who wouldn't want to live in a mall that's infested with zombies? You kill all the zombies you want. They're hecka slow. They're hecka slow in that one. Still, yeah, people. They ran in that one. Not the yeah, first one. Right. Oh, well, the remake they did. Yeah. And. Um, they were like more of the bluish zombies that like yeah. kind of moves like slow. Right. And then the motorcycle gang was in there. Tom Savini was there, yeah. wasn't he? And he was in a lot of those kind of movies. The, one of the biker gang guys was getting his blood pressure checked while a zombie was eating him. That was funny. <laughs> yeah. And um, at the end of the movie, the the with uh, Romero likes to cast big black guys as strong leads. The guy always going to shoot himself in the head, but then he was like, you know what, screw this, I'm going to run around these zombies. And he went up and he went up in the helicopter with the pregnant lady. So, kind of a happy ending, kind of not because <laughs> zombie apocalypse, but it was pretty cool. That movie's so long. Yeah, I, it is pretty long. You could fall asleep on it and wake up and, like... Be halfway through. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize how long it was until one night I was watching it. So I bought, it, I bought all of them all. And I wasn't going to buy, like, a bunch of zombie movies on Blu-ray. Because they're just zombie movies. Mm. But then I was like, no, i got to get the George Romero stuff, at yeah. least. Yeah. And then like, I'll get whatever the new ones are that come out. But, uh, yeah, it is long, though, because I actually looked at the running time on the, on the Blu-ray, and I'm thinking, maybe they just, like, added some shit? And I'm like, no, it's, like, really, like, 4,000 hours long. <laughs> this, this rivals The Hobbit in time. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell, man? And I think they released a, a new version of the original uh, on Blu-ray not so long ago, and it's like an uncut version. Oh, like, holy <laughs> shit, was there another four hours in that? <laughs> it's funny because we, uh, we were over at Brad's house for something a long time ago, and uh, we popped in that movie, and Nick, who's not a big horror fan, like fell asleep during the movie, and he kept waking up throughout the night, and it was still on. <laughs> he was like, oh, man, when is this going to be over? Uh, next on my list is Jeepers Creepers, yeah, one of the greatest horror movies uh, of the new millennium. There, there was a whole run of horror movies that just sucked, like predictable and stuff, but this one was great. Justin Long was in it. Uh, the Creeper was a great villain. At first you're thinking he's this, uh, normal human, and you see him coming up in his truck, and, uh, I mean, what kind of a monster drives a truck anyways? Yeah, a feeder truck. Over yeah. There. And it, the uh, license plate, I beating. thought I thought it said uh, beating you. Because <laughs> yeah. that's what they said in the movie. Yeah, yeah, but then when you look at it, it's be eating you. Like he's going to be eating you. Yeah. That's what I, and and th that just shows his comic twist, yeah. too. And it's great to see uh, some pedophile. Uh, well, he, he likes little boys. Like, that's why he cast Justin Long and stuff. So well, I would, too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's got nice lips. <laughs> they, they've been thinking about kicking around a, a third one to finish the series, but it might. I don't remember it, what happened in the second one. It I mean, was, was a, a bus, and he goes in and kills a bunch of kids. It was like a school bus, and mm -hmm. there was some racial tension in the bus, and and then it ends up where the dad, the, the creeper, takes a little kid at the beginning, and then the dad at the end saves the people on the bus. And he actually holds the creeper down until the 23rd day. And he turns into a cocoon thing. Oh, okay. And he doesn't know if he killed it or if it's going to come back. Oh, okay. So it said it like 22 and 364 days later or something at the end of the movie. Because he comes back every 23 years. Mm -hmm. He's sitting there waiting for it. To, it's either going to come back or it's going to be dead. He doesn't know which one. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what are some of those, uh, those movies that you thought sucked around that time? Uh, Messengers. Yeah, I didn't like with uh, the heroin addict, uh, Kristen Stewart. Um, yeah, sure. There's uh, just a 
like a bunch of ones like that. There's the one with, uh, I think Lindsay Lohan, uh, like she played someone who, who like lost her memory and then when she got taken back to this house, she remembered. Oh, so she played herself. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, uh, like the call, the yeah. eye. Yeah, the eye. Yeah, there were a lot of like movies that came out, because I do remember like Jeepers Creepers kind of broke the barrier because it, it came out around the time when they were doing a lot of the Japanese remake horror. Yeah, ring, ring, yeah. Ring, ring, I like the eye because of Jessica Alba. Hmm. But, um, because that, that original still kind of freaked me out. So you liked her in Sin City then, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And everything she does, yeah. including me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. <maybe. laughs> Sometimes. For, uh, if, like us on uh, Facebook, Jessica Alba at Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia. Pat's on there. We know you're listening. <laughs> I know you're on there. <laughs> uh, but um, I like how he has to eat body parts in order to survive. So if he like eats two hearts, you get, if you destroy one, he grows another one until his stalker uh, is out. Um, and great, great feeling. The, the on end of the song of that is real. Cre- the end, mm-hmm. the ending mm-hmm. when they have the Jeepers Creepers song going. Mm-hmm. You just hear Derry screaming. Yeah, he's ripping out his eyes. That whole visual is just crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's kind of cool because they only had like a two. They only have two person cast in it. Yeah, him. Yep. really. I don't remember anybody else being in the movie that it was relevant. Yeah, I like the crazy cat lady. She's like, "Did you bring him onto my property?" That's not my scarecrow. Yeah. And then when he, uh, oh, in the, in the, in the beginning, there's like this demonic, uh, picture of him in, in full form. You don't know that's him until he, his wings unleash. And like, oh man. Yeah. It's good. He's got that hat. Mm hmm. Like yeah. I actually want to get one of those hats because I want to be a vampire slayer, uh, next year for Halloween. All right. So, uh, my next one, uh, is seven. It is what it is. <laughs> In my opinion, it's the best serial. It's the best serial killer cop movie that I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. It was. I mean, I guess I could put the collection and Saw in there with the serial killer kind of vibe, but I mean, this was actually like, well, I guess Saw had cops too, but like True Blue, like cop thriller drama, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, because usually human people. Usually they focus more on the killer, but this one they're. It was the two cops yeah, trying I mean, to, you got into their head and see how they worked. And they, yeah, it's, I mean, they, I mean, they did such a, I mean, Andrew Kevin Walker did such a good job writing that script, and he basically said something like, he, after, I mean, it was his, that was, they never said what the, what the um, city was that they were in, but he said that this was like his love letter to New York, mm-hmm. when he used to live in New York, and, uh, he didn't know, like, after this movie, he didn't know if he was ever going to, like, write another movie again. Because it was just, like, I guess it stuck with him for that long. Oh, yeah. I mean, but, I mean, it just, it showed the grittiness of, of, I mean, everything. Police work. I mean, it actually showed, it actually showed, like, the whole thing of how police work works in the general. I mean, they, they showed, you know, forensic stuff, they, little chase scenes, I mean. What's your favorite line in that movie? What's in the box? <laughs> Whenever a box is delivered at work, Patrick and I work together. He says that. What's in the box? What's in the box? Come on. What's in the box? No. no. And then my other favorite line is, uh, I don't know the whole line, but it's the one where he talks about like, what, like uh, being naked with peanut butter all over his body. Yeah. And grabbing out to the other site. Yeah. That part was hella funny too. There were some, I mean, there were some funny lines in that movie, but, like, there's some, also, some really sick, twisted scenes, like, uh, Victor. Uh, I, I mean, I just, I had no idea that guy was alive on that bed. Yeah. I mean, I thought for sure, I was like, this guy, sure as shit, he's dead. Yeah. I mean, with all those sores and stuff on him, and I had to think about the patients that we deal with that are yeah. in hospital beds, and I'm like, I mean, it's... And then the, uh... The lust. The lust with the, the blade. The blade dildo. Yeah, the blade dildo. I'm like, dude, where can I get one of those? <laughs> I wouldn't even wear it. I'd just display it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's just... They were so creative in that movie, though. I mean, I can think of a... I can think of a movie with the seven deadly sins, and I would never have been that creative with how they did it. Yeah. My next one is going to be Trick or Treat. Oh, yeah, that is a good one. One of the great Halloween movies. I'm uh, too. What's that? It's underrated too. Yeah, it was. People don't know about that movie. 
a lot of people don't know about it. It was straight to video, I think. Well, what, it was um, supposed to come out in like 2007, 2008, and it never did. Yeah. They had it in trailers in front of movies for the longest time. And then after like two years, I think it, they finally released it. They released it. Um, it, it actually wasn't straight to, to video or DVD. It was um, it was shown as like selected like independent theaters. Yeah, was, that's such a great movie. Sam the Demon. Yeah, that, mm -hmm. that little thing's great. And how sexy was that werewolf scene? That was like <laughs> the best werewolf scene. Yeah. It was. <laughs> I was like, man, I want to go in there. When, when those girls with their mid transformation with their eyes and stuff, yeah, that was that was tight. I like that part a lot. I like the whole um, the Samuel part with the bus driver with the retarded kids on the bus. Yeah. Like wrong way. Is that what they're saying? Wrong way. Wrong way. Wrong way. <laughs> Yeah, and then he lived with that guilt for his whole life, and it ended up being in the last part of the movie. The rich of blood candies. Yeah, and, and the um, the beginning with Thurman Merman from Batman. <laughs> yeah. Oh and yeah. The curly headed was, kid. Yeah, that weird looking kid. Yeah. yeah. In Bat Santa, yeah. Yeah, Thurman. Your your name's <laughs> Thurman Merman. <laughs> Thurman Merman. <laughs> <laughs> They're doing a sequel to Bad Santa. Are they? Yeah, they wanted to, uh, Billy Bob Thornton wants to do it. Of course he does. Yeah, why wouldn't he? <laughs> fuck me, Santa. Fuck me, Santa. Fuck me, Santa. I'd want to do that too. Hmm. Yeah, and um, that whole movie is—it's it's broken up, kind of like Pulp Fiction, separate parts. It's kind of out of order, and it's a horror movie. Pulp Fiction is one of my greatest, my favorite movies yeah, of all time. And then when you have horror into it, it's like awesomeness. Yeah. They need—they need to have more movies like that. So that was that was up, uh, the next on my list. Uh, oh, yeah, and didn't he blow that dude like the little kid's face and like shoot him in the face or whatever? Sam the Demon. Yeah, I think, yeah. Because I saw you saw like what he looked like underneath. Yeah, because he had the burlap sack on. Yeah. yeah. And he was that smashed up, weird looking pumpkin looking face. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you had to obey the rules of Halloween. I like that yeah. part too. How you don't smash the pumpkins, check your candy, things yeah. like that. It's like the the when they showed his like pumpkin looking face, it reminded me of. Uh, Probably one of the worst movies that I've ever seen, and that was what was it Halloween three? Yeah, nothing to do with the Halloween <laughs> season series. of the witch. Pissed me off. Season of yeah, the witch. Where did you at least put something in there about Michael Myers? Just like even like a little cameo or something, like a news flash? Yeah, what were they thinking? I know, seriously. Like, come on, that was a time though when they were doing a lot of those kind of movies, and they didn't know what to do after like the first couple, mm. and they went in different directions. Because like, uh, what was it? Like, it was one of the Friday the Thirteenth they did. That. Yeah. Like he Part was, five. Yeah, he wasn't even he wasn't even in it, was he? No. It was just some guy wearing a mask. It yeah. wasn't Jason. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, Friday the Thirteenth, when they went, was it number two? I think, where they kind of tried to go. They tried to make the gay guy. He, well, I thought he was gay because they had a lot of gay overtones. <laughs> but, um, they tried to make him like. Jay, and then Freddy shows up later. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, in part, the Freddy's oh, revenge. Shower scene yeah. and stuff like that. With yeah. the gym teacher. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dude, really? I watched that, like, what was it? When I first got the Blu-ray set, I watched the, that one, and I was all, I should have liked this movie. <laughs> that, <laughs> was the, horrible. that was the first Not Wearing Elm Street movie that I think we saw, because yeah. our mom uh, rented it on VHS, and I remember just looking at that video cover with Freddy on there with the glove. I was like, this is hecka scary, mm -hmm. and we would sneak. He would, uh, I think, mom and Uncle Ron were watching it at our grandma's house in her apartment, and we were trying. We like sneak in and try to see if we could see see the monster and stuff. But eventually, our mom let us watch it when we were what five. Yeah. So um, she took us to see part three in the theater, and we kept our eyes closed. Uh, did the whole yeah, and I did that with uh with the fly. Yeah, oh yeah. I was all, because they didn't want my parents didn't want me to see the, the sex scenes, and mm -hmm. I'm all, what sex scenes? Yeah, I don't see anything. And then we were like, ah! we were all scared, and our mom was like, you better watch this movie. She was slapping our hands down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we, man. we had our ears covered and our eyes shut the whole movie. Yeah. And our feet up on the chair. Yeah. <laughs> we're kind of some bitches, huh? Yeah. We were little. <laughs> Do you remember the brand of mask and Season of the Witch? Uh, I don't. Silver shamrock. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It had the shamrock on the back. Yeah. yeah. What? Dope. Put your mask on at midnight. Okay. And watch the cart. Watch the commercial. Watch the, all doing this or what? It wasn't like spinning around. Watch the like, Pokemon seizure video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah but I, I it's still, if they brought out a Blu-ray set with all the Halloween movies in it, I'd, it wouldn't matter if that was in there. I mean, I still, I still want to go out and find it. So. 
Yeah. Yeah, that was a shitty movie. <laughs> Uh, next on my list is Friday the 13th. I'm going to say the remake. Uh, I really like, like we said before, how they did the whole part one within the first 15 minutes. And I liked how Jason had the underground to the, to the, um, to his den. Yeah. And he had all the traps with all the bells and let, yeah. and let him know where people are. So it made him seem intelligent. Yeah. He wasn't just some dumb bug. With, with the uh, P size brand, like they say, and Jason goes to hell. Yeah. I recently watched that. It's like a funny. Like he's totally like smart. Man. Yeah, big prudish and smart. And I like how the the douchebag gets his and gets his. Like, like I was like, I'm waiting for him to die. The blonde dude. Yeah. Oh, I know that fucking little pussy ass. Yeah. Bastard. I hated that guy in that movie too. I felt bad for the uh, for the uh, what was it the Asian guy in the shed. Yeah. I wanted him to oh, live. Yeah, I did too. And then uh the uh, the guy from that movie yeah, show. Funny. Yeah, he was hella funny, and then, like, they just, he just bit it, I mean, it was, like, oh, uh, and then there was, cool. that was kind of cool that they put in, um, the guy from that show, Supernatural. Yeah. Was that Jared, that was, yeah, that was Jared P- Padecki or whatever. Oh, did they? Yeah, mm-hmm. he was the guy that was looking for his sister. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. On the more attack one. Yeah, and, and the, the, the blonde guy didn't like it. Yeah, they come at me, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Did you just call me bro or something? <laughs> so my bad. Yeah. Uh, mine's actually uh, Halloween, but it's the old school one. Mm-hmm. Even though I really did like the the Rob Zombie remake one. That was a really character cool development. One. The character development was awesome. Did you like the second one? I did for a different reason, mm-hmm. but I didn't like how uh, the the first. I mean, the the remake was was. I mean, it was really well done, and. Uh, I liked how they gave him a different kind of mask. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and like, I was actually kind of really surprised that Rob Zombie actually managed to like write a really good. I mean, yeah, it was a horror movie. You know, mm-hmm. And he likes horror movies and stuff. But like, to see somebody that doesn't normally do that kind of movie write it, yeah, and then direct it out of all things, he did a good job. But uh, and it was close. I mean, I almost picked that one for, mm-hmm. for the Halloween version. The original. Iconic. Yeah, I mean, it, I mean that just the music and the music's. I mean, the music's awesome. awesome in that. And just like, I mean, in in the colors that they used in it, I mean, it was almost like it was black and white because mm-hmm. it was just there wasn't it was very dull. And uh, and then of course Jamie Lee Curtis in the movie, I mean, she just like blew up on the scene because of that movie. You know, I took my kids trick or treating two years ago, and uh, when we got to one door, my, it was a guy dressed as Michael Myers. He was standing behind the person giving out the candy, yeah. and so of course my daughter gets all scared, so we leave. And then I look back, and he's sitting there behind the hedge, looking at us. Like he came out of the house <laughs> the time. And so I look at him, and I was like, "No, sir, look!" And then he steps out. And she like starts running, and then so he steps back into the hedge. We go down a couple more houses, and we turn around. And he's like closer. <laughs> yeah, it was heck of tight. And she was like, she's like, I'm scared. I'm gonna do that next year. Make him start walking. Yeah, because he never runs. No, he just walks the whole time. And like, just parts in that movie were like the best. Like he'd be standing there randomly, mm-hmm. and. uh didn't he put somebody in like a washer and dryer in that movie? I think he did kill someone. I remember something about the rock washroom. Yeah. But it, yeah, that movie is so nostalgic. Like just different scenes in that movie like pop out at you. Like when uh, she's in there trying to wake up her brother yeah. or the little kid, uh, and he's like taking his sweet ass time getting down the stairs, and he's coming towards her. So good. Yeah, it's a very good chase movie. So next on my list is going to have to be my favorite new horror movie of the new millennium. It's going to be Insidious. Ah, yeah, it's good. Very good movie. Uh, if you guys haven't watched it, go out and watch it. Uh, kind of like, pol- it got elements of the poltergeist in it, but not a different dimension. It's like a different parallel universe with uh, people in the further. And the lipstick face demon or fire face demon, whatever you want to call it, man with fire on his face. Very scary. Uh, they bring back it to the Tiny Tim song, Tiptoe Through the Tulips, and they use it in two parts of the movie, and it's very creepy. Is there a reason why they play that specific song? No. I think just because it goes with the genre, mm-hmm. like of the era of the people dressed up and stuff. But, um, 
scared my kids with it so many times, so uh, I, that's why I put that on my list. Very cool movie. Yeah, it was really well done. Considering, it, I mean, it came from the guys that did Saw. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you went from a torture film to torture porn, however you want to call it, to like almost like an old school like ghost mm-hmm. horror movie. Yeah. I mean, with the exception of just a different twist with different types of ghosts that were in it. I mean, the guy that was walking back and forth on the on the uh, on the outside yeah, of the, the outside room, of the house on the porch and it shows up in the house like that was nowhere. so tight. I mean, it's like I didn't expect that. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's there was some jump jump out stairs like legitimate. They didn't need the scary. loud music to yeah. scare you. They just showed that it's the like image. They show, yeah, it's like they just show it, and then they have, and then the other part that they use to kind of get on your, like, to get into under your skin was the music. Mm-hmm. So like the or whatever the, the yeah, weird, I don't know. It sounded like almost like it was a like a radio or like a TV, like that, just really loud, like right pitch. at the beginning. Yeah, yeah that really loud. Like a violin, yeah. like kind of loud, loud violin. Like ripping apart the violin. Another part I like in that movie is the wife. She's like so pitiful, so scared, yeah, and no yeah. one believed her. They're like, "Fuck you, crazy bitch!" Yeah. <laughs> what are you, talking? you put this red handprint here on the sheet. Yeah. She's like, "Yeah, well, you deal with this." Yeah, he's like, like mm. "Okay." Yeah, and uh, Lynn Shay. I have to give it up for Lynn Shay in oh, that yeah. movie. She's awesome in the first one and in the second one. Uh, I was in the theater, and when she made her first appearance on the second one, everyone cheered in the theater. That was so tight. Uh, she really does a good job in that. And then the end of the second one. Not, I haven't seen it. Ah! No, we won't leave it at that. Though. Okay. Um, yeah, it's, it sets first it up for the third one. still the best, yeah. by far. I mean, the first one is, is definitely like more horror feel. The second one is a lot more comedy in mm-hmm. it. So I can just imagine whatever they're going to do. Did they dub Lin Che's voice on in the beginning of the second one with the young lady? Because it sounded they, just it, like I her. I think it probably, they probably did. Yeah. They had to mm. um, if they did, it's damn good dubbing because you couldn't tell at all. No. Um, and then um, and then the writer of the movie, I mean, you got to give it up for, for Lay Window. Yeah. I mean, he was hilarious in those movies. Yeah. Um, and then whoever the other guy was with the, the heavier set guy with glasses and stuff, the beard that was always eating. That dude's hilarious too. I don't know where they got that guy from, but I like when they're like, "Let's play uh, instead of rock paper scissors, ninja hunter bear." Yeah, <laughs> that from part two. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Got to give it up to Not Wearing on Street. Um, the original. It's when he when he's coming down at you with those long uh, arms. Mm-hmm. Oh man, that's just and his creepy face. Uh, it's just so frightening. Yeah. When, when he's walking down there and his glove is stretched out and his hands are like, uh, we, we almost shit our pants. <laughs> we were so scared. <laughs> and, and that's why I, I actually like the feeling of being scared when I'm watching a scary movie. It's weird. And I like having nightmares. It's just, it's a, it's an adrenaline and rush. So. Trust me, I, I wish I could get scared. <laughs> yeah. I don't, my, my fear tolerance is extremely high. Yeah. I just, I don't get scared very, very often. Like, a little bit here and there, I might get a jump scare here. Yeah. Or get that weird tingly feeling where you got goosebumps. So, like, like still, to this day, it's not to take it away from you, but, like, in, I mean, Sixth Sense, when, that, like, that little kid is in that car, and he goes, you know, because he's standing, oh, see, I still got it, right? <laughs> See all those goosebumps? Yeah, wow. Still, yeah. like to this day, he's, because he's, because there's because she's standing right next to you when like you're talking about the car. Yep. Right? Yeah. Like I still get yeah, they're all over the place. Yeah. I still get goosebumps to this day from that one damn scene. Yeah. And like so, I don't get scared very often, but yeah, you know, certain things just freak me the hell out. Like that. Yeah, they do. It's I think that's why I like it so much because it's so hard for me to get scared once I get that scare. I'm like yes. I, that's the only thing that really scares me now is my nightmares. It's for some reason, it triggers something in my brain that really makes me scared. I think my creative side is what scares me the most. <laughs> because I can come up with the most weird and twisted stuff, and then like, I'm probably like, really? I actually thought of that? Like, <laughs> out of all any, out of everything? It's from all the stuff we saw. <laughs> it's piled up. Yeah. I, 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 don't know. I, I mean, I've been watching scary movies since I was younger, I and mean, with my dad and stuff. Whether it's zombie movies or pumpkin head or whatever the case is. Oh, I knew I forgot a movie. Okay. Yeah, seriously, I mean, it's like, I don't even remember what happened in pumpkin yeah. head or like the whole storyline. And so, like, I really do want to go back and watch them all. The only thing I remember from pumpkin head is actually 
derives from the Misfit song Pumpkinhead. It goes through basically the whole story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there is one. Yeah, so is that your your next movie? Was the Sixth Sense? No, actually, I didn't know if you were. Oh, I was done. Yeah. We're done. Uh, my my last one is actually Dawn of the Dead too. Oh, okay. But mine's flip flopped. The remake. I do really, really love the gossip one, but like you say, it got me thinking because I actually wrote Dawn of the Dead and it was a stand stanza and tied neck and neck, and uh, I couldn't decide which one was going to be better or which one was going to be like topping the other. But after we were talking about the length. Yeah. Of the old one. <laughs> yeah. I was like, let's go. And then you start talking about the originals. I'm going to go with the, the remake. Yeah. And it's only because, like, the zombies ran fast. Um, the zombie baby. Yeah. Which I think actually has something to do with, like, the zombie baby craze now that's going on. Yeah. Because, uh. <laughs> that's where it originated from. Yeah. I mean, that's where it came from. And, uh. I mean, for remakes to, like, overpower their originals, it's tough for me to like actually say that that's going to be a better movie than their original. That's one of the few that actually, it do, it, in it, my opinion, yeah. it, if it doesn't top it, it's damn close. Because you don't know what, like it just hits you and goes boom, and the movie yeah. just takes off. I mean, it just starts. With that little girl, yeah, the yeah. little girl zombie. And Bing Rhymes is in it. Yeah. yeah. He's perfect for these kind of movies. Yeah. I mean, it really sucks that he kind of just fell off the face of it. You know, once... Once he had his thing with like Marcellus Wallace and, and Pulp Fiction, it's just like he kind of just there you go. It's funny, I was going to say, oh, he died, but no, that was uh, Clark. Michael Clark Duncan. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, I just, I don't know. The, the remake of Dawn of the Dead, it was just something about it. Just, I mean, like you said, the whole thing about the malls. And, you know, just, it's like, you got to figure if there really was a zombie apocalypse, where would we go? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, everybody's different in this world, like, what well, we you know. Some people might go out to the hills to get away. Some people may go to a mall. They may people just may stay just home. Stay home, yeah. I mean, you might be safer in your own home. Yeah. Um, it sucks because when so whenever there's that post-apocalyptic thing going on, you have to think how scary it will be, not just because of the zombies, but with humanity. Yeah, humanity. Um, I mean, humanity's twisted now. No laws. Can you imagine if there's no laws, what people would do? I mean, and, I, and I, it's exactly true, and it's like, and I think that's one of the main reasons, I mean, not to like go into a weird different topic, but I think that's one of the biggest things why I'm not, I'm not okay with the whole, everybody should carry a weapon. Yeah. And the law should be concealed, you know, everybody can carry a concealed weapon, because I don't, I think it's going to be total anarchy if that happens. And it will be like a zombie apocalypse, yeah. only there won't be zombies, it'll just be a bunch of things like people walking. Can you just imagine, it'd be like the U.S. people would be the military taking yeah. on the government, and... It'd be total chaos. I mean, anybody rubs you the wrong way, boom, you're dead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I was standing my ground. Yeah, I mean, it's just, yeah, it's, just, it's sad, but yeah, the zombie apocalypse, it's not the zombies I'd be worried about. Yeah. It's just, it's just uh, taking the food, scavenging things. I mean, there'd be murders, rapes. I mean, everything would be like sky high. Yeah. My uh, wife would actually not be able to live as long because she depends on insulin to live. Yeah. So that's another thing. So is there eventually there won't be any more insulin manufactured? So so um, on that note, my number one movie is going to be Paranormal Activity two. Huh? I'm just kidding. What? <laughs> <laughs> we were like, really? Part two? <laughs> I didn't even like part one. <laughs> no, it's Nightmare on Elm Street, of course. So the original Nightmare on Elm Street. So. Not the remake. <laughs> So well Jackie O'Hurley, you were great in Little Children. You play a great pedophile. You were great as Rorschach in uh, Watchmen. But, uh, but Freddy. Suck as Freddy. Yeah. Sorry. He's, he was pretty good, as, like you said, as uh, human Freddy. Yeah, he was great as the pedophile. Fred Krueger, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Fred Krueger. <laughs> but other than that, so that goes for our top five list. A uh, pretty lengthy top five list. I don't think we've had him. That, be a whole hour before <laughs> but um another bit of news we want to share with you is we're actually going to be making a movie here or patrick is going to be making a movie where what's your what's the movie going to be called well um we we're kind of tossing around well actually we weren't tossing around ideas at all i'm actually co-directing it with a friend of mine um josh adams um he's on my facebook as well he's never done any movies doesn't have really any background whatsoever in movies um in fact until relatively recently, he never really got into like horror movies to myself or until me. But uh, 
We, uh... Don't you have a degree in filming? Yeah, I do. It's a, it, well, it's an AA, but, um, still a degree nonetheless. Cool. Um, but I've also been in, like, a... I've also been a, a movie fan for forever. I mean, I worked at Hollywood Video for several years. Um, I've, uh, I've always wanted to write films for Hollywood. Um, I've, like you said earlier, you know, we're all big movie uh, horror fans. I've always wanted to do horror, and uh, so I was kind of like trying to think of a. Mo uh, and usually, um, for my movies, I can come up with a, with a title pretty quickly. And um, this movie, I had no idea what the title was going to be. And uh, so uh, Josh had one day thought of Slash Mountain, and I was kind of like, well, because the killers were going to have the killer was going to have. Um, a machete was going to be a homage to like the whole classic 80s style uh, slasher films, and uh, and I was like, oh, Slash Mountain, that might work. And then um, I was a, uh, I was on, I think I came up with something about blood. I was like, blood, what about blood, uh, blood mountain or blood, blood hill or something like that. So I went online to check to see if anybody used it, and uh, found Wikipedia, and I started reading some interesting facts about blood mountain. Well, no one's used the name that I could find as a movie, but I did come across a story about a uh, mountain. I don't remember where it actually is, but uh, it's actually called Blood Mountain. And uh, there's different reasons as to why it's called Blood Mountain. Some people think that it's Blood Mountain because of the type of dirt that's there, probably like the Indian kind of dirt. Um, Indian clay. But there was another story where of, a, of, a hitch, of, a, of a hiker. She, I guess, went out hiking and uh, I think she was a photographer or something and um, she went with I guess a hiking buddy and he murdered her. Hmm. He, uh, I think he cut her head off or something and uh, so they, they said that the reason why it's blood mountain was because of this murder and uh, they caught the guy and it was a only murder but um, so I just kind of stuck because I was like alright well it's a, it's a movie about a killer it's on a, it's on a mountain hmm. Why not call it Blood Mountain? And uh, instead of Slash Mountain, because I kind of did away with the, we did away with the, um, with the machete angle when we went with the sledgehammer. So it's a little different having a sledgehammer in the middle of woods. So we're going to start filming next year. Yeah, next year. Uh, I think in the spring or something. I think. So I, yeah, I guess it all just depends on when I write the script. Yeah. Right now I'm writing in bits and pieces. So. And, and that also brings up, because uh, Brandon's been writing a book, too, and um, I, I know you guys were talking a bit about having writer's block and stuff, so um, was there any other things you wanted to tell about the movie, or? Um, oh, just that uh, it was supposed to be, it was supposed to be a group of campers, male and female, that go out into the woods, long story short. And then we uh, kind of scratched that idea, and, and now uh, besides a, a little, like, besides an extended cameo from me and Josh, um, it's actually an all-female cast. His uh, sex sells. Yeah, it does. So does that mean that there's not going to be sex in it, or is there going to be lesbian sex? Oh, there's going to be new. There's going to be no no titties, <laughs> no titties. Okay. I probably won't be able to get anybody to convince him. <laughs> That's true, huh? <laughs> I'll have to figure out a... Well, I don't know. I'm the, I'm the writer, so... What I write, I guess, goes. But I think... Uh, there'll be extensive um, I auditions. I think there'll be probably underwear shots. I can, I can plug a, a... I can plug a short scene where... Uh, I have actually a new opening scene, which I don't think I even told you guys about. Uh -uh. Um, it's not going to be the opening scene that I originally wrote. It's actually going to be a scene from, um, it kind of does play, play a little homage to, like, horror movies, but um, it's actually a scene involving a character that's not even going to be in the movie, except for this one scene. Hmm. It's going to be the classic death scene of just a random person. Kind of like Drew Barrymore? More or less, yeah. yeah. And uh, <clears throat> I wish I could get somebody like Drew Barrymore with that, with that house, but... Um, but yeah. no, it's actually Jessica a... Jessica Alba, if you're listening. Yes. <laughs> yes. <With> my penis. <laughs> you can edit that out for me, too. Um, no, it's actually a... It's actually a female, and she's running through the woods, and uh, she's in her underwear. Is she, like, so running through the woods happily? No, she's not going... La, la, uh. <laughs> la, 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 la. Running in my panties. 
And uh, she's actually running through the woods, and then um, she uh, sees a break in the clearing uh, at the roadside, and she gets just to the roadside right before she gets pulled back by the killer and stabbed multiple times in the chest. And then it starts off the movie. Uh, so cool. Kind of a, that's awesome. You know, so I wanted to go with something that's like just gets you right then and there. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong, the other scene could totally get you, but... Uh, the other scene was a little more gut-wrenching, gut but I thought this tied into the, I thought this opening scene tied into the actual opening scene of the actual movie. Yeah, like when you sent me the screenplay for the opening scene with the uh, baby sitter, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, this is so professional, like, I cannot <laughs> write like this. <laughs> uh, this is hecka tight. Uh, see, I get pretty wordy and, and, and whatnot, too, so, but I mean, I guess that's, I mean, I guess that's good, but, uh, but yeah, it's like, just like that, I was... I was writing this movie, or I was making notes in my phone, and that's what I've been doing lately. And then uh, I got that idea for the for the other movie. Mm -hmm. And then I got another idea for another movie. And then I think uh, I went to Brad one day at work, and I was like, "Hey, I want to do like a short film, like a, maybe like a ten minute film for Christmas, mm -hmm. just to kind of get our feet wet." And uh, and so I had told Josh, and he was like. No, I don't <laughs> want to do that. I want to do this film, and I was like, we can still do this film. It's not going to be until next year. We can do this this Christmas yeah. slasher film or whatever like this year, just to get our feet. And it's only ten minutes. And it's only like ten minutes long, you know. And I pretty much can write that like that. So like I know from point A to point B, yeah. what I would do. So he was like, no, no. And then well, he uh, so just to mess with them, I wrote out a, a scene. For this Christmas movie, and I said, "Hey, I'm actually going to do this Christmas movie, whether you like it or not." And I knew he wouldn't believe me by saying that, so I sent him a text message with the full scene. And then he's all, "I hate you." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "I was like, I told you." And he's like, well, "It's pretty cool, but I still hate you." And yeah. then I was all, "Yeah, well, I'm just joking with you. <laughs> I was, I just wrote that up just now." <laughs> and uh, he actually liked it, and he was like. He was like, actually, I really like that. And uh, I actually have it on my phone, and it wouldn't sound very good just saying it over the, over the, the, um, the mic. But essentially, it was it was a quiet Christmas street with Christmas lights and, like, faint Christmas music, you know, typical. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the Santas and the Frosties and whatnot in the, in the, in the front yard. Is it day or night? Night time. Okay. Night time. You know, it's like the whole... Like the fog that we saw coming yeah. out here, yeah. it was kind of like that kind of style. You know, the cold, like the, the winter. And then uh, breaking the um, breaking the silence or the peacefulness, the happy, happy, joy, joy, is a chainsaw, the screwing of a chainsaw. Actually, it's the it's the sound of a woman screaming and the loud sound of like her running through the street. And then you hear the chainsaw, and then it's a killer, like a crazy guy in a Santa hat with like a butcher's like apron, running after with the chainsaw, mm -hmm. kind of like that. Yeah. Last year. And he, she, she's wearing heels or whatever, and she's got some blood on her and stuff. She looks like she came back from a party, and uh, she kind of snaps one of the heels, and she falls, and uh, like probably steps in a manhole, and how it snaps, and uh, she kind of falls, scrapes up her knee and stuff, and then. He's standing on top of her, ready to like come down with the chainsaw, and she's just like, no, no, you know, puts her hands up in defense, and he just takes a swipe with the chainsaw and cuts both of her hands off. Mm -hmm. Blood squirting, spraying everywhere, and then she's like looking at her hand with blood squirting out of the, the stones, and then he just takes the chainsaw and goes down with it, like in a drill kind of like motion, and just like takes it to her face and just like rips up her face, and then you just all you see is blood, you don't really see like her face. And then, uh, then the the um, the name of the the movie shows up on the screen, like in blood. Mm -hmm. And uh, I don't remember why I called it. I think it was like a Christmas something, like a Christmas massacre or something. I don't know, something cheesy. And so I sent it to him, and I was like, this "Movie I'm going to be working on right now." <laughs> and uh, but I was just like, "No, we won't do it." So I kind of took that original, I took that part. Because we both liked it, and I kind of revamped it, and that's why I'm using it in the movie. Oh, cool. Blood yeah. The so, just minus the chainsaw. And sledgehammers are brutal. 
Like, yeah, and it's funny that you mentioned that because in that first scene, you know, there's no we don't know that, that we're actually using a sledgehammer in the movie. So it's like you just think it's a knife. Because he's, yeah. You know, just stabbing her a bunch of times. And actually, what kind of also gave me an idea about that is actually the part with you bearing on it. Yeah. And screaming. Mm hmm. The whole. Yeah. Punching the knife on her. I mean, I can think of little things. I can think of other kind of movies. I had like an idea for a Batman movie a long time ago that involved the Mad Hatter and the mm. series of traps, and it's kind of funny because it kind of was like the whole Saw kind of feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was. Is there one movie in particular that you think actually got you started to wanting to make movies? Um, or was it just like the whole horror genre that you're like I want to I want to write people and have them die. <laughs> I want to film people dying. Well, I kind of made some notes for this podcast. Like, because I knew if I was going to be asked certain things, um, I'd be kind of more prepared. But I, no, I mean, there's not really any movie that like really inspired me. Mm -hmm. um, not that I can think of. Because I, I have to actually, well, no, I take that back. Because I really, when I really got into the whole like wanting to write movies, um, I was never a big fan of wanting to direct them, and I was never really a big fan. I hate editing, so I have no desire to edit this film. <laughs> like I'm trying to put all that on uh, Josh, but the one do by himself. But yeah, I hear you there. I edit every one of these podcasts. <laughs> yeah, it is sucks. So I have to listen to like the whole thing like twice. <laughs> yeah, and I mean I can imagine how difficult that would be listening, just listening to stuff, not actually seeing uh, yeah. footage. But like, but when you're editing the footage, whether it's ten minutes or five minutes or two minutes. Or Hour and a half, whatever. However, I, mean, I can just imagine editing the Hobbit and all the holy shit that is coming. I'm going to shoot myself in the face. <laughs> <I'm experienced. laughs> We've never met Josh on a personal level, of course. Where did you guys meet? Um, several years ago, I um, I ended up dating his um, his ex-wife's uh, best friend, mm -hmm. and uh, actually, the first time I met him, I thought he was dead. <laughs> And like, that's how most relationships start out. Yeah, most true. romances or whatever, most Cause, um, guy friends. Because I was with, I was with his, uh, I was with my ex, uh, my girlfriend at the time, and I was with her best friend, and I went to see a movie with them. I don't know what movie it was. I want to say it was Nightmare Before Christmas, maybe, but I can't remember. It was something. And uh, we took his car, and um, he uh, he didn't want to go with us. And so he had, she, his ex-wife had a tendency to, uh, to lose his key, like lock keys in the car, things like that. And sure enough, we got to Brendan Theater, and guess what? She locked the key in the car. And uh, so we came out of the theater, and we're trying to figure out how to get the key out. And he's like, letting, uh, he's telling us on the phone that there's a key that he always got, he always has a spare key in the car, mm -hmm. the little magnetic box. And it's raining, you know, and, and it's cold outside. <laughs> And like here I am, Mr. Like gentleman or whatever, and I'm like crawling under the car. I still remember to this day that I was wearing camouflage, like <laughs> like uh, cargo pants. I'm crawling under the car. I'm looking for the fucking key, and there ain't no key under there. And I'm getting pissed. I'm like waters all over me, <laughs> yeah. I'm freaking getting cold. And uh, and like her best friend just like, oh, you're so sweet. <laughs> and, blah, 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 blah. and I'm just like, there's no fucking key. On this guy's. Like, Shit. <laughs> and I'm like looking and looking. I can't find this damn key anywhere. And uh, and so um, so I'm like pretty much I've gotten to the point where I'm giving up. On this. I'm like, there's just not, there's no key, you know. And like I get on the phone or whatever. I'm like, dude, there's no key. I don't know what you're talking about. But there's no key. And he's like, yeah, there's a key. Well, there's a key in there. In any case, he came to the theater, got down on his hands and knees. Reached under and pulled out the key. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, you gotta be kidding me. I, this guy had to have brought the key with him. He, oh, yeah, it. he had to have brought <laughs> that key. Cause there's no way that key was down there. And he's like, yeah, it was right here. And I'm like, what a dick. I mean, this guy's like the biggest cock in the world. And then we all went out to, um, afterwards, we all went out. I think it was afterwards. I mean, it was a different day, but we went to, uh, uh Mel Diner. Yeah. And like ever since then, like, man, they just told us, like, we were just making all sorts of jo jokes and stuff. We were talking about the waiter, like, being hella smile, because he had, like, a big smile, and mm -hmm. he was always happy, hey, did you get anything else, and all that kind of stuff, and I was, like, getting coffee, and I was getting cream for my coffee, and I was, we were all making, I was making jokes about, like, the coffee, cream being not really cream. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, we just totally, like, hit it off, and we were just, like, 
got along hella good. I mean, we, you know, like everybody, we all, I mean, we've had our, like, ins and outs when it comes to friendship. So we had a couple of uh, falling outs. And yeah, it was weird. It was like, I just, I, uh, I don't even know, like, who brought up wanting to make the movie. I think I was, I, well, I've been wanting to do, like, a music project with him for a while. Cause, um, long story short, we came up with a film production company that we created, uh, Death Space Productions. Mm-hmm. Because of, um, uh, I was helping them move one time. We moved all the stuff in this, uh, we were moving stuff out into a, uh, storage facility. And I looked over at a desk or something, and there was this face in the dust. Hmm. And I was like, huh, that's kind of creepy. Hmm. And so I had taken a picture of it, and for like the longest time we thought dust face, and like we were talking about wanted to do like a music project because he plays like a piece of guitar and he's playing and he plays like keyboard and stuff and I've done a little bit of singing and stuff like that too. And um so we we just thought, okay, well Dust Face, you know. So like it became kind of a comedy kind of thing and I actually did like a nine almost like a nine minute long song. Hmm. Just totally like um uh, improv and uh comedy comical. And um so it just kinda of, that name just kinda of stuck. And then we went camping one time and we saw another picture. Or we, we, uh, no, we stopped at a, at a place. Well, I showed my door and my, my truck was totally dirty. And in my window, there was a full on face in the dust of like a native, it looked like a native American. Mm. And, uh, I was like, that's the second time I've seen this shit. Yeah. And, uh, and now every time I go and take a shower in my shower, I see these like little faces, like, mm-hmm. in, like the, the dirt and the uh, stuff embedded into the thing. I'm like, really, it's just like that thing or something. <laughs> so yeah, so we just decided, okay, well, let's just call the program production company Dust Face. That's tight. And uh, that's kind of like how like our little filming thing kind of got going. Yeah. So it's just for a guy that has o- almost no experience whatsoever in film, to a guy that's got a degree in film, it kind of meshed well. Like, he's not like the big writer in it, but he's trying to learn how to do the whole filmmaking. And he bought a big book and he's been reading that and stuff. I, I give him mad props. But, uh, uh, yeah. Cool. So, we're really looking forward to filming uh, Death Space Productions for Zen Blood Mountain. Uh, tentative name might change, might stick. Can't wait to start doing it. So, I think it'll stick. It'll cool. Change. Okay. Blood Mountain. All right, well, this will do it for this episode of Treasure Hunting for Nostalgia Horror Edition. This is Brad. Brandon. Pat. Happy hunting.